This is one of our drying kilns. This is where we dry our heading and stave material. We yeah. dry it down to around 10 or 12 percent moisture content and it enters around 20 percent. And how long you know, would that typically stay in the kiln for? Seven to ten days based on ambient temperature. Right, and then presumably straight for process at the cooperage? Straight into the process, yes. Good. The biggest thing you'll notice in the American cooperage as you walk in is the amount of noise generated by the machinery, the size of it, and it is just a vast assembly factory. Every single element of the process here is machine driven, other than the barrel raisin. That's the only part of this process that has real manual intervention. They have to do that to get the number of casts out in production. Typically here in this factory, we'll be producing 2,500 casts a day, and they're all primarily to feed the growing bourbon industry. Here, the casts are much cheaper than they are in Spain. Typically, a new American bourbon cast will be 120, maybe 130 dollars. When you compare that against the Spanish sherry butt that was costing maybe a thousand dollars per cast, albeit it's a smaller cast, but you can see where machinery helps production and helps keep costs down. The highlight of all these tours, however, has to be the barrel charring process, where half a dozen casts go in at a time and are subjected to heat upwards of a thousand degrees per cast and you can see this belch of flame leaping out only for about 30 to 45 seconds depending on the specification the customer asks for uh, and then just with a simple spray of water it's extinguished. It's this firing process, this charring that imparts this most pronounced flavour into bourbon, you know, the rich creamy caramel vanilla flavours that we all know. The head toasting section is similar to the charring process. What we're doing here is one end of the head is getting blasted by huge amounts of heat and you can actually feel that blasting down the tunnel at us. The head then comes out and it goes through a dip of beeswax and what the beeswax does is it helps to seal the cask. Once the head goes into the main bulk of the barrel, it also acts as a lubricant to ease the head in rather than forcing the head in and shattering some of the wood. Here, we're at one of the planers in Blue Gas Cooperage. This machine starts putting the angles into the staves. And if you look at this, the machine is planing a camphor line down the full length of the stave and is also putting an angle into the wood. That helps the barrel raiser when it comes to building the cast to form the shape of a typical barrel.